Hello everyone and welcome to session 9. Look at this airplane, it's a masterpiece, but for us it poses a critical question. How do we get the right numbers for lift and drag? I'll tell you a secret. 90% of safety simulations accuracy comes from getting one specific part of the mesh right. If you get this one part wrong, your beautiful simulation is worthless. Your lift and drag values will be completely wrong. That critical part is the bound layer, the topic of our current session, and the professional tool we use to capture it is called inflation. Today, you will learn the one technique that separates beginners from pros. By the end, we will build the perfect bound layer mesh for this very airplane. Let's begin. So, I want to start with a big question. Why is this so important? In the world of fluid dynamics, all the interesting and critical action happens in a paper-thin layer right next to the surface of our model. They call this the bound layer. Think about the air flowing over an airplane wing. Right at the surface of the wing, the air speed is actually zero. It's stuck to the wall. But just a tiny distance away, it's moving very fast. This incredible change in the speed happens inside that tiny bound layer. Now, here's the problem. If we use a normal mesh with those big, chunky tetrahedron cells we learned about, they are simply too big to see what's happening in this thin layer. This slide has the perfect analogy. It's like trying to measure a tiny grain of sand with a big ruler. You will get the wrong measurement every time. So, what's the solution? The solution is inflation that we learned today. Instead of big, chunky cells, we will tell the software to build a beautiful structured stack of thin cell layers right on the wall. I want you to picture a stack of pancakes. They are very thin at the bottom and get a little thicker as you go up. That is exactly what an inflation mesh looks like. And its goal is simple to capture the physics at the wall perfectly. So our calculations for lift and drag are accurate and trustworthy. Very well, I believe this is time to put it into practice, especially when it comes to this fascinating Airbus model. Uh, so as you can see here, this is our Airbus model that I downloaded from free online resources. And you can see all the faces are modified and it is now ready for simulation. This is why I prepared a very big and extended uh, coning hole shape domain around it, which is very common when it comes to uh, aerodynamic analysis. Uh, so if you're an aerospace engineer, this uh, part of our ANSYS machine course is essential. And uh, you have to know how to use bound layer, how to generate that, and the different methods uh, to produce it. So let's go to ANSYS machine. I want to start doing the mesh step in ANSYS meshing regarding the default values that we can see in here. So uh, by default, the software detected a default value about 50 meters for elements, which we already know that this is uh, very big and results in an appropriate mesh grid. It couldn't even uh, successfully generate the grid because it could not capture all the curves and all the faces. So Let's just decrease the global sizing to 20 meter. Maybe it could be much better and uh, a proper choice to start with. All right, at least it could be generated successfully. And as we can see through the statistics section, uh, we have about half a million elements. Uh, regarding a section plane, we can see what's going inside uh, because you already know about the advanced size function that uh, we have through the global mesh settings. So as you can see uh, beneath the sizing method, the curvature was turned on and automatically it detected the curves uh, and the faces uh, on the Airbus model and could um, somehow uh, decrease the element size in these faces. And uh, as we get far away from the model of the Airbus, uh, we are going uh, with a smooth transition to bigger elements. So this is what we expected from the global mesh metric. 
Uh, regarding the element size that we can see right now around the wings and on uh, the uh, walls of the airplane, uh, we already know that we cannot capture all the details uh, of the flow behavior on the walls. This is where we need to uh, somehow refine the mesh grid and it is not just about the element size. Sometimes we need to establish band layer and this is where the current session focuses on. Uh, so the question is how to create this inflation. By right clicking, as always, if you follow insert, this time you would see a new option down here called inflation. So whenever you're dealing with inflation, the first thing that it asks is about the whole domain that you want to generate and produce the down layers in. Of course, this would be the biggest um, zone that we already can see. And after applying that, it asks for the boundaries that you want to uh, produce the bound layers on. So we already know that uh, it was a body that I selected and to establish bound layer on the faces or surfaces of the airplane, we just have face selection tool. In order to select uh, all the bodies, it would be much more rational to pick up the box selection tool, draw a box, and in this way, we can successfully select all 38 faces of Airbus model. Then it comes the inflation auctions. And uh, this is very important because uh, we have uh, in total five different approaches. But I guess the most important one is the first layer thickness because uh, it somehow relates to Y plus value uh, that you must know about it. I mean, it's somehow essential to know for a very space engineer or any CFD engineer. So let's get through these five models. All right, now that we understand why we need inflation, it's time to focus on control panel. This slide shows the five different strategies or recipes that Hansus gives us to build our inflation layers. Let's walk you through them from the simplest to the most advanced one. First at the top, uh, we have a smooth transition option. This is the default method as you saw and for good reason. It's the simplest and most robust. You essentially just tell it the number of layers and growth rate and the software automatically creates a high quality, a smooth transition from the inflation layers on the airplane to the main mesh that has bigger elements. It's the automate and perfect for getting a good results quickly. But next it comes the total thickness uh, method. This method is very direct. You use it when you know the physical size of the bound layer you want to capture. For example, you can tell it, I want to create 20 layers within a total height of 10 millimeters. It's very predictable and gives you direct control over the total inflation vision. But in most cases, we do not have any idea about the total thickness of our bound layer. This is why I rarely do this uh, method. And next, Let's focus on the most important method on this slide for any serious CFD work. Uh, this is first layer thickness. This is of great importance. This method gives us ultimate control by allowing us to specify the exact height of the very first cell of the wall. Why is this so critical? Because it is our direct connection to a fundamental concept in turbulence modeling called Y+. Plus. In simple terms, Y+, plus is a special non-dimensional number that tells us our CFD solver how deep that first layer is inside the bound layer. Different turbulence models requires the first layer to be in a specific position, either very, very close to the wall. For Y+, plus less than 1 or in a specific region, is slightly further away. Getting the correct Y plus is absolutely essential for accurate drag and heat transfer predictions. This might sound complicated, but we've made it very easy for you. On our website, we have a complete guide and a Y plus calculator. Simply, um, you can input your flow conditions like speed and flow density and your desired Y plus value and the calculator will tell you the exact physical height you need to enter for your first layer height here in ASUS. So this is a professional method. It connects the meshing process directly to the physics of your simulation. And it's uh, one of we'll be using for our airplane. 
Uh, so you remember I said that we do not have the total thickness of our band layer in most cases, but when it comes to first layer thickness, it's totally different because of that YSET concept. We will get to it. So finally, we have the last two, first and last aspect ratio. Think of this as advanced specialist tools for controlling quality. They don't control the height directly but rather the shape of the cells, the ratio of their width to their height. You use them in complex cases to prevent the inflation cells from becoming too stretched or screwed, ensuring the overall mesh quality remains high. So to summarize, I should say, we have a simple album mode, a smooth transition, two methods for direct height control, total and first layer, and two advanced tools for quality control, aspect ratio. For our high fidelity simulation today, we will be using first layer thickness with the help of our Y plus calculator to achieve the most accurate results. Very well, so I guess it is just time to show you what will happen if we apply either of these choices. I want to start with a smooth transition. As pointed out, the solver asks for a transition ratio and maximum layers and growth rate. So as you can see, the default values may work in many applications, but uh, in most cases, what we adjust is the maximum layers that matters the most, because we need to observe ourselves the final grid to see if there is any big jump in element sizes after the down layer or not. So let's wait for this first one. Very well, here we go. Uh, I guess it could create that, and uh, but just zooming it, you can see what is happening right now. So you can clearly see five layers of bound layer that was formed on the surfaces of our uh, plane. Uh, so what is important in here is that we are using uh, hexahedral uh, elements on the faces of our airplane, which is very important when it comes to capturing uh, that tiny and critical behavior of the flow on the walls of our model because this is where the biggest changes happens and it dramatically affects the forces uh, that we need to measure so uh, using this smooth transition gives us this option but in most uh let's say aerospace applications uh this model cannot be the best approach so i just want to focus on the most important one uh, we described the other ones uh rarely do you use first aspect ratio last aspect ratio which controls the uh, ratio between the uh, length and height of this layer so this is called aspect ratio and you already know about it because we covered mesh quality metrics in the first session of our course. So uh, we need to stick to the very important one, the first layer thickness that you can find in here. So what software asks from you on top is the first layer height and this is the most important parameter that you must enter. If you check our website, you can see on your, our YouTube channel a complete video about Y plus concept that you must know if you are a CFD engineer. Then in order to calculate Y plus, you don't need to put any effort. On our website up here through the CFD calculators, you can find Y plus calculator. And just by entering some um, parameters that the solver asks, you can have your desired first layer height. And this is the main way you can calculate and estimate the first layer thickness. And you can later on lose it in your simulation. So let's say we need to have a, a down layer starting with, uh, let's say, one millimeter thickness. So I need to establish 25 layers with 1.2 or maybe decrease that to 1.15 uh, growth rate. So what I expect from it is 25 layers, which starts from uh, one millimeter in thickness, but it gradually increases uh, with growth rate of 1.15. So let's see what will happen. Very well. It has just created and now we can check what is going on in here. So you can see if you zoom 
And uh, as we can see in here, we could successfully establish these 25 layers. But the point is that we have a great jump from our last layer of our bound layer up to the nearest one. And uh, this is actually one of the main reasons uh, causing many errors in your calculation and simulation. So right now, I'm not saying that we could uh, transfer this to as is flown to proceed, but you need to focus more uh, to generate uh, more layers in this area to uh, somehow has more gradual increase in layers without any uh, actually gap within this. So uh, to overcome this problem, one of the ways is to increase the maximum layer uh, numbers, but uh, keep that in mind that it will um, actually follow affects the total number of elements. The other way is to increase the growth rate, uh, for example, getting back to 1.2. And a final option to change is the first layer thickness height, because this is our your most important parameter and uh, we calculated that so we do not want to uh, increase that uh, so just bear that in mind that uh, you need to know more about your first layer height in the first place and then you have two tools to change this uh, issue and the circumstances that we are hearing the other point is that you can decrease the global size function that uh, somehow helps you to create a smaller grids and uh, prevent this uh, big jump in element sizes.